Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and the perfect battle, uh, actually, and the perfect land-based battle platform for your current Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign. All right, now this is a really special idea, and I think there's tons of things you could do with this, what I'm about to present to you in Dungeons and Dragons, but it, we're also going to talk a little bit about today about real life Dungeons and Dragons, right? So uh, I'm a proponent of real life Dungeons and Dragons. What I mean by that is if you are a dungeon master, uh, don't worry about this if you're a player. Players are shallow end of the pool. Uh, they, I think maybe one in a, I would say one in a hundred players are incredibly serious about Dungeons and Dragons. If you're serious about Dungeons and Dragons, step up. You you, you best dungeon master, right? Because the world needs you desperately, right? Good dungeon masters are rare as hen's teeth. So, like, the re let's stop pretending that players are like super important. They're not, right? Like, like, they're they're just not. They're not, right? We need dungeon masters a lot more than we need players. And just so you're aware, right? The best player players are often dungeon masters in other campaigns. So come on, right? Like, graduate. Let's go, right? All right. So, but if you're a dungeon master and you're serious about Dungeons and Dragons, you can adopt what I call real life Dungeons and Dragons adventures, right? So I, I've done this. So it's and I've done this at different levels in my life, and and I continue to do this. And it really pays off dividends, right? So what is what is Dungeons and Dragons? It's player characters going on adventures, right? Well, you don't have to sit around and wait for that in your Dungeons and Dragons game. You could do that in your real life, and you could be inspired by your Dungeons and Dragons game, right? So how do you do that? Well, the first time I did this was bicycling. Uh, I really got into bicycling a while back. Just went heavy and hard on bicycling. Really, you know, ramped up my bicycling experience, right? And the reason why is it's exploratory, right? There's explore. It is literally exploration, right? And when you ride around a city on your bicycle, you can interact, right? And there's and there even is combat, but it's combat with your physical health, right? So. Uh, the whole world is desperately trying to keep you in a chair looking at a screen. And so you could combat that by, you know, by physically, by being physically active. So bicycling is really a D and D adventure for me. And and it's inspired. I'm like, this is my steed. My, you know, I have a $600 blue Trek bicycle. It's my steed, right? So recently, uh, I went on another, just really, uh, dialed in Dungeons and Dragons adventure. And I'm going to tell it to you right now. So, um, so I recently got HBO Max for free and I've been watching the heck out of it. I love it. And there's a great show on there called The Flight Attendant with Kaylee Cuoco. So I'm in there. So I'm watching uh, episode five of uh, The Flight Attendant uh, with Kaylee Cuoco. And she's standing there talking and, you know, they're, they're solving some, some mystery or some nonsense like that. It's a good show. It's a, it's a very good show. I'm loving it, actually. Um, uh, highly recommended. Five out of five stars. So she's doing something, right? And I'm like, what the heck is behind her, right? And I look behind her, and there's a building behind her. She's in New York City. She And she's outdoors, right? And actually, specifically, she's in Hudson Yards, right? And behind her is this gigantic structure, which I'm like, what on earth is that? And it's a building made out of stairs in the shot, right? And... um. I've never seen anything like this thing. I'm like, what on earth is that thing, right? So they don't explain in the show what it is, but I immediately paused the show and was like weird building made out of stairs. And it came up with what it is. It's called Vessel. It's uh, Vessel is your next Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign battle platform. It is amazing, but wait until I tell you what it real is in real life. So I'm not kidding. On a Friday night, I saw this thing at 11 p.m. I immediately, and the next Saturday was going to be a long, open, relaxing Saturday, right? My my wife was taking our daughters down to Baltimore to do some charity work. And so I had the whole day to myself, and my, my junior high son was with me. And we were just going to, like, he was going to play Mario Brothers, and I was just going to, like... I was planning on going out and getting a sugar plum macchiato from Dunkin' Donuts. That was literally my plan for the day, right? Like, at 11 p.m. on Friday night, I was like, oh, my gosh, we're going to go see this thing tomorrow. And so I immediately went. I bought tickets. They were only $10 a piece, right, uh, to go to go to New York City in Hudson Yards to see this uh, this vessel, which is an art installation and a building and a structure, 
right? It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. It costs two hundred million. Uh, they estimate that the final cost of it will be two hundred million dollars. It has a hundred and fifty four. Uh, hundred and fifty four flights of stairs. It rises sixteen stories above the ground. It has eighty landings on it, and it contains twenty five hundred individual steps. It is a building made out of staircases and landings and nothing else. Right? Gets weirder. It is tiny at the bottom, and as you go up, it goes out. Right? So it is like triple or quadruple the circumference at the top as it is at the bottom. It is lit, It is a building made out of stairs that looks like a flower, right? Me and my son went up. I hauled, <laughs> I hauled, I hauled my old entire body up there, up every single one of those stairs to the top. My son, like, I, he yeeted right up, right? I said, I'll see you up there, right? Like, it took me, like, three times long to get up there as it did him, right? But I met him at the top, right? And we, you know, I, I climbed all 16 stories of that thing, right? By the way, I was so excited when I saw this thing. I was like, a building made out of stairs. I got to go see this thing. Then I get there, I'm like, this building is made out of stairs, right? <laughs> like, so, but that's the part of adventure, right? You get in the position, you have to push yourself. And I had to literally push myself to the top of this thing, Right? It was gorgeous and stunning. And we saw Hudson Yards from this gigantic height, right? And we were looking from all these different landings. And when you look inside, it's beautiful. It's this piece of art. It looks like a honeycomb. It looks like, you know, a gigantic queen bee should be in the center floating. You know, it's insane. It is a fantasy object in the real world, right? Now... If you live within 200 miles of New York, get your butt to Vessel. Go see it in person, right? It's worth the trip, right? I will tell you the costs, right? So $10 per ticket, right? By the way, you can get free tickets. I just bought them because in this unusual time, by the way, this, you know, this, uh, this adventure was completely masked up, gloved up. We did it as safe as possible, full social distancing, the whole nine yards, right? And they are also doing everything they can to make sure that everything's safe as well, right? Uh, so, so we go, right? And, um, so, oh yeah, it's totally worth the trip. Uh, it costs $10 per ticket. It cost um, $50 to park, $50 to park for a four hour, for four hours on this thing. Uh, and you know, getting lunch and that kind of thing. Uh, and then it cost everything. It, it was probably another 30 bucks, you know, just to get through all the, the easy passes to get there. Right, and then it was probably another thirty bucks in uh, in. So what are we at now? We're at a hundred and thirty. Uh, is another, about thirty bucks for for gas, or about one hundred and thirty dollars, you know? And then oh, then throw fifty on top of that for eating through the day, right? And that's for two people. For so for two people, it's one hundred eighty dollars to go see this thing. It's worth every penny, right? When I saw it, I'm like, this is a battle platform. All right, now. I've told you about it. I've presented it to you. You now know about Vessel in Hudson Yards, okay? There are a hundred ways this thing could be used in a Dungeons and Dragons game. The first thing you could do is you could just set this into your campaign world and say and, and create it and, and make it a wizard's tower, right? And say, oh, you've seen the, these stupid wizard's towers that are like circular and go up and they look like a chimney shaft. This is a super dope wizard tower, right? <laughs> like, you know, like and then actually uh, have each landing um, uh, have the wizards uh, cast darkness on it, and only the people in that landing can see it, right? And so, and this would be the perfect wizard's tower. There's lots of other uses for this thing. And the reality is, I've told you about it, right? Go check this thing out. Look at the pictures on Wikipedia. If you're within 200 miles, go experience this for yourself. And the reality is, I think you could really go hard on this and create an entire and make this a major structure of any. Um, really D and D campaign, uh, campaign, and what you could do is you could have these positioned like every ten miles within a kingdom, because they are the ultimate battle platform. They truly are. Uh, so one of the things if you have eighty landings, right? You can have archers, you can have wizards, you can have you know dudes with boiling oil, you know, um, and and also you can have scout, you know, uh, you could use this for reconnaissance. It's incredible. This is it. Really is a fantasy structure in our real world but this thing belongs in any D and D campaign it's sitting in the middle of hudson yards in new york in our world 
but this really belongs in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It's I experienced this as a real world D and D adventure. You know, pushed myself, got out there, explored, interacted, combated my own laziness. That's Dungeons. That's the three pillars of Dungeons and Dragons. I challenge you to do the same thing. If you can't make it out to Vessel, check it out online, and you will see immediately this needs to go into your D and D campaign. It's truly unique. And here's a really fun thing, okay? So I talked a lot of smack about players at the beginning. They could step up, right? So one of the cool things is you can put this into your game, but it's so you the, the structure is so unique and so exciting that I think it will be exciting to see what your players do with it. It's really fascinating. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear what you think. Have you been to this thing? If so, what's your thoughts on Vessel? I'd love to hear. Let me know in the comments below. Or please consider liking and subscribing. If you haven't been, have you seen any unusual structures around you? Have you seen D&D fantasy world structures that are sitting in the middle of our real world? I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.